to learn how. Welcome back to Learning How. Today we're learning about Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Mozart was the youngest of seven children. Five of these children died in infancy. When his sister was seven years old, she started keyboard lessons and three-year-old Mozart sat and watched. Would you know that he would try and play perfectly and by the age of five, he was composing pieces. Mozart's father taught him music and his academic subjects. And when he was four years old, he started learning to play the piano. And like I said before, he was five when he wrote his first musical piece. When Mozart was six years old, he started performing for audiences. He wrote over 600 pieces and is one of the world's most famous composers. He was born in 1756 and died yeah. in 1791 and he is from Austria. During this time in history, in 1776, um, U.S. declared their independence with the Declaration of Independence. And in 1787, the United States adopted the Constitution. A quote from Mozart states, Be silent if you choose, but when it is necessary, speak. And speak in such a way that people will remember it. The first song by Mozart that we are going to study is called Requiem. M Mozart began composing this piece in 1791. It was unfinished at the time of his death, which was in December of 1791. Mozart finished the first two movements of the Requiem and started some parts of the third movement and the fourth, but the rest of the piece was composed by Franz Xavier Sussmayer. And the key word that we're gonna be listening to is soloist. A soloist is a musician who performs alone. So here's a bit of the song that you get to listen to. This time, this time, can I play next? You get play next. Do you like this song? Uh, I feel like ballet. Would you think of ballet? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you Mom. do you, do you think you'd listen to this music like in the car? Oh yeah. Let's see if you can listen to the soloist. Let's see if you can pick up. Which piece that is? Is it more uh, Requiem? Let me listen to a little more of it. It's very full. This is a school song that we listen to is called Piano Sonata in A, a Dante Grazioso. So the sonata has three movements. The first movement is a Dante, which is a, like a walking pace. And in fact, it is unusual for a sonata to start with a slow tempo like a Dante. So the first movement includes a theme and six variations. So you can tell that this song is very kind of slow starting out with it. So the key word we're learning for this song is called variations a version of a theme, but it changes to the melody, rhythm, harmony, and ornamentation so that it sounds new, but still recognizable. So let's see if we can hear the different variations of the song. So as you listen to each of these variations, see if you try to hear where Mozart changes each time. Does he change the tempo, mm -hmm. the dynamics, the rhythm, and do any of these variations sound happy? And do they sound sad? And what changes to the music make them happy or sad? So let's we can fast forward a little sad. bit. So it's sound happy or sad? I'm so happy. Happy, yeah. Let's see what this one sounds like. Sounds a little faster now. Is this happy or sad? I'm sad. Is it sad? Yes. Why does it sound sad? Because. I think it sounds kind of happy. It sounds like something you hear at the arcade, like at the old time arcade. How about this one? So you hear the different variations. This one's a little bit different, but still what's recognizable. This, what's this page? How about this one? 
How about this one? Happy. So that is a different variation, right? Yes. Yes. The third song that we're going to listen to by Mozart is called Piano Concerto Number no. 21. Piano. This is the second movement, Adante. So this was written in 1785. The second movement, which we'll sing to right now, is the most well-known part of the concerto. I bet you probably have heard this. It sounds, um, this is, you can use in cartoons. I think I've definitely heard this in a cartoon before. Mozart completed this concerto just four weeks after the previous one we just listened to. At the premiere performance of this concerto, Mozart played it himself. What a treat for those people. The key word that we're going to learn here is Adante, which we kind of talked about before. We said it was kind of a walking piece, but it means moderately slow tempo. So when you listen to this, can you hear the Adante, the slow tempo? It sounds like you're walking. Tempo! And the fourth and final song from Mozart that we're going to listen to is called Symphony 41. This is sometimes nicknamed Jupiter. And so this is the longest and last symphony that Mozart composed. He wrote three symphonies, including Symphony 41, in the summer of 1788. He was very busy. Ooh, the morning's over. And so the instrument that we're introduced during this is the trumpet. The trumpet is a brass instrument with a flared bell. Modern trumpets have three vowels. And um, probably not in class, we're gonna be able to, oh, Reggie, stop. <laughs> we're not gonna be able to watch a video on the trumpet, so I'm gonna include um, a video about um, the trumpet. And uh, so if you wanna learn more about the trumpet, you can watch the video, because for class, we have a special project that we're gonna do that we learn about in one minute. Okay, so this week for learning how, we have a really fun project. It's a little bit labor intensive, so I am not sure if we are, sorry, the camera is all wonky, mm -hmm. I'm gonna keep pulling on it. Um, I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to finish in class. So this is definitely a project you'll be able to take home. Um, but um, we are gonna celebrate Christmas like the Austrians yeah. celebrate, um, because Mozart is from Austria. And so in Austria, that um, the people like to go to markets, kind of, I guess, like craft fairs, but they do go to markets about four weeks before Christmas, which is about this time of the year, and they like to buy big treats, like pretzels and cookies, and they buy, like, handcrafted wooden dishes and candle holders and needlework. And so you're gonna do your own needlework, so you can choose maybe to give this as a Christmas gift to somebody. So we have these fun little kits that you're gonna receive. This is for, um, Maybe the older students, for the younger students, like pre-K students or who people who don't think that they might be able to up for the challenge of this one. This one's gonna be, have to be a little hard. Um, be able to, you have to follow this, the um, stitch pattern for these, but they do come with a pattern and a guide. Um, I also have these kits where you can create your own rainbow. And so these are actually a little bit bigger holes and a bigger plastic needle that you can be able to stitch your own. So for class, you can choose. I have a whole bunch of different patterns for these kids, um, and you can choose which one you'd like to do. And then for younger kids, we have rainbows. So it'll be a fun learning how for us to be able to make our own. Yes, like I'm young. Yes, you're young. Bridget, you will receive a rainbow. So we will do our own needlework and celebrate Christmas and big, uh, kick off our Christmas season like the people do in Austria, where Mozart is from. Subscribe with you. Big fun up. And don't forget to hit the what? The notification bell so you can hear the latest episode so see you later see you later bye